Okay, so here I've included some other tips. Now, some of these tips overlap with things that I already talked about. And, you know, I did put some of these tips below the video so you can easily reference them. But go in and, you know, take a full, you know, quick read. I will go over uh, some of them one by one. Um, but some of, again, a lot of these things we've already covered. Okay, you know, practical advice number one, um, you don't need to be your team members' friends. They have their colleagues for that. So your job as a manager is help them manage their time and activities. Help them manage their time and activities so that they can meet the goals that you set for them or the goals that they set them for themselves. Okay, that's your job as a manager, not to be their friends. You don't have to be their friends. You don't even have to like them as a person, but you can still be a great manager and build that relationship of trust and respect even if you don't go along with that person. And you don't have to go along with that person to be a great manager. Right? Sometimes it helps if you like them, but you don't have to like someone to be a great manager and to um, know if that person is performing or not. Okay? Uh, another advice is, hey, you know, know what your team is expected to do. What's the expectation? What does your supervisor expect your team to perform? Uh, so we talked about that quite a bit. Another advice, deliver satisfaction. Right? Satisfaction is the difference between what is expected and what has been delivered. So always over, over deliver. Write down what the expectations are from your boss, what the expectations are from maybe the boss's boss, um, and what the expectations are from the customers. And come up with goals uh, that your team would hit, that you would hit, and try to over deliver always. Okay, another tip, uh, deliver satisfaction to your supervisor, customers, um, and then also, you know, another to help each member of your team deliver satisfaction to you, be clear on the expectations, help them know uh, what metrics to use when possible and so forth. So again, you can read some of the bullet points. Some of the things I didn't talk about in the earlier video that I'll highlight is, um, hey, if you're a manager, one good tip, and I mentioned this in the communication course is work a bit earlier than everyone else, leave a little bit later than everyone else, that kind of uh, set yourself as an example. So um, if you want to lead by example and that really helps, um, then do that. That, that. that can be good. Okay. Another advice, set goals for yourself, Get set goals for your team, set goals for each member of the team, use metrics whenever possible, be clear on your expectations to each of your team member. Um, another tip, try to have employees self-reflect and evaluate their own performance before you tell them what you think. Giving them time to reflect and digest is super important, especially for introverts because um, they need time to digest and process. Okay, another tip, seek for inspirations on how you can help your team. Um, approach things with a prayerful heart and that will go a long way. Uh, I already talked about avoid creating complex processes and uh, policies, especially if those are triggered by C-level employees. Good managers realize that, you know what, there will be some employees who will take advantage of some of the freedom that are allowed. But if I create all these additional processes and policies because of the C players in my team, well, C players are going to be out of my team anyway in a few months. And if I create all these additional processes, that would basically just restrict the A level, the A players in my team. So anyway, Enjoy that freedom, create a you know, culture of trust, uh, create a culture of freedom, create a culture of autonomy as much as you can while you're super clear on what's, what is expected, right? The re be su super clear on the results, but exactly how to do the work, sometimes you could give them some freedom. Sometimes you don't want to, right? So again, that depends on the nature of your work, uh, but use your best judgment and if how to do the job is not as important as the final result, then you can give people some autonomy. And you know, more autonomy there are, people usually like it. Although sometimes if you already have you know, a process that you really want people to follow, hey, don't give them autonomy. You know, tell them exactly to follow that process because it's proven, and then give them autonomy on maybe new things that where there is not a clear process laid out. Okay? Another tip. 
if you're a manager, sometimes, especially first-time managers who are always busy working extra miles and doing that, sometimes when you become a manager, you may find that, you know what, I actually have some downtime. And you may not know what to do, what to do with yourself because you got this extra time that you didn't have before. Well, one thing to realize is as a manager, it's important for you to stay clear in your head. So if you have some extra time, instead of always being preoccupied with work, you know, getting your hands, you know, uh, busy and, you know, feet busy, take some walks, read some books, learn how can you can improve so that your brain can stay sharp. Okay. It's important for your team leaders to work under a manager whose brain is really sharp rather than work under a manager who's working super hard but where the brain is not so smart. That's doing a disservice. So as a first-time manager, realize that, you know what, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, I'm okay with being 80% busy and 20% I'm actually kind of free and use that time to stay sharp, to stay focused to maybe meditate, take on walks, think about, hey, are we doing the right things? Is there anything that I'm not doing that I should be doing? Right? And seeking for these inspirations will go a long way. Another tip, understand what the goals for your supervisor is and contribute 10 to 20% of your energy each week to see how you can exceed the goals or over deliver. There may be other areas that uh, your supervisor is most likely going to have you work on. If you're proactive on working some of those things in advance and later when the supervisor gives you that task and say, do you know what? I thought um, those would be important areas. So I actually took some time to already do some research. They will really, really appreciate that proactiveness. I have that happen a few times with some of the people I worked with. And that is such a deep trait. How the manager is practically thinking and anticipating the future needs of mine and proactively working on it. What a what an amazing example. Um, of, of, yeah, just superb. So if you can spend some of your energy there, I think that would be good. Okay, so below the video, as you give me some feedback on the courses and as you ask some other questions about how to be a better manager, I'll include some other tips and advice that I think would be helpful. But again, you know, I hope you remember that um, I think that the three most important attributes you should have is to be proactive, to be results driven, and to be efficiency driven, and to really have those attributes develop, have you think certain thoughts always on a daily basis, which will then compel you to certain actions and those things collectively as you make efforts every day to be a better manager to better manage the resources that are in your storage to better serve your customers and your supervisors i have every confidence that you will become a great phenomenal manager okay